Egyptian-born Mona El Tahawi is a widely respected analyst and commentator on Arab and Muslim affairs. Her columns appear everywhere from Qatar's Al Arab newspaper to Israel's Jerusalem Report to the Washington Post. She joins me now from New York. Mona, thanks for talking to us tonight. And let, let's pick up on uh, in the comments made today by President Mubarak. Coming out to uh, something I hadn't seen before, where he says he will fire the entire cabinet, but he will stay despite the fact that he was the one that everyone was pointing the finger at and demanding the head of. What do you make of this, this move by Mubarak tonight? Will it make any difference? You know, I was absolutely astounded to hear Hosni Mubarak say, I'm going to fire my government and think that this will have any effect on the tens of thousands of Egyptians who have braved his brutal security forces. Clearly, uh, those protesters want Mubarak gone. They don't want his government gone. They want him gone. So what I heard today was a president who has been in charge for 30 years, but who is absolutely tone deaf to what his people want, a, a president who thinks that he still deserves the fear of those people, where Whereas those protesters have been telling him clearly, we're not scared of you anymore. And what I've concluded is that Hosni Mubarak has earned the hatred and the rage of his people, and he doesn't hear it, despite that rage of the tens of thousands who have been on the streets for the past four days. I guess the question then really is, what happens next? Because if Mubarak wants to stay on, and if he still does have the support of the armed forces there, he may well stay on. What will be the game changer here? If he's not going to go willingly, what will happen? Well, I think the, the, the real game changer and what we have to keep an eye on over the next few days is this unprecedented wave of mass uprisings across Egypt. Remember what happened in Tunisia just a few weeks ago. Uh, President Zainab al Abidin Ben Ali, you know, another Arab dictator who had been in charge for 23 years, he held on and he kept thinking that by going on television and pretending to care about the poor and the unemployed and the repressed of his country would quell the uprising. It didn't. What happened after four weeks of those uprisings was that he got the army on the street, but the army refused to shoot at the people. This is what we have to keep an eye on here. As Egyptians continue to protest, we, we want to see what the army is going to do. We've seen the security services shoot at the people, but what will the army do? When the army refused to shoot at people in Tunisia, Ben Ali realized he was done. When Mubarak sees, now we, we've all got to sit there and see what the armed forces will do, and Egyptians are pleading with the armed forces to side with them and not side with Mubarak. You know, I'm hearing so many commentators talk uh, from Egypt today about how Egyptians have had this pent-up tensions that they've had for over the years, which makes me wonder, how has Mubarak been able to contain those tensions for so long? Well, you know, through a series of repressive, me uh, repressive measures, basically, he has created a security service of many arms and branches of the hundreds of thousands that he has used to repress the Egyptian people. There is an estimated 12,000 to 14,000 uh, political dissidents in jail in Egypt. Horrendous human rights violations. As your correspondent was saying, uh, you know, half the population in Egypt lives under $2 a day. When Think about that. Think of that, that half of the population that, that lives on or less than $2 a day. You are so consumed with making enough money just to feed your children. You don't even have time to think about this man who has been ruling you for the past 30 years. So, you know, he gives just enough, you know, through subsidies with food and stuff, but not enough so that people can actually have enough and think, wow, you know, I deserve more. What's been happening in Egypt is Egyptians are saying, we deserve more. They are marching in the street, not just for poverty or against poverty. They're marching in the street for freedom and dignity and telling Mubarak, we know you're the cause and we want you gone. Mona, we're witnessing history. Thanks so much for your insight tonight. We do appreciate this. Thanks for having me.